this video the five things every single patient who reversed kidney disease is doing and if you do them too you will have a huge chance of reversing kidney disease Catherine here, I've been helping kinesis patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And while patients with CKD are supposed to progressively lose renal function, what I found out is that there is a significant amount of patients whose renal function is stable or even improved over time, even in stage 4 or 5 pre-dialysis. So what I want to focus on today are the five things that set these patients apart. Now guys, if you follow me here regularly, you know that what I talk about mostly here is what really works when it comes to reversing the decline of kidney function, when it comes to going back from stage 4 to stage 3, for example. That's what I talk about here almost every day. So the thing is, there is a huge amount of information about how to do that in scientific literature today. There is a serious risk of, you know, getting lost in the details and losing the bigger picture. We don't want to do that. So the question I want to answer today is, what are the things we must do if you want to reverse kidney disease? There are five things that everyone who reverses kidney disease is doing. Five things that are a must. Let's see what they are. Starting with number five, keep your blood pressure down naturally. Okay guys, let's start with what seems to be one of the biggest conundrums of today's CKD treatment. We all know that when trying to improve our kidney function, our GFR numbers, keeping blood pressure below 130 over 80 is an imperative. At the same time, however, what some of the most authoritative papers about CKD tell us is that we must achieve this target without relying too much on ACI, ARBs, diuretics, and other antihypertensive medications. Yep. High blood pressure damages the kidneys, but taking ACI and ARBs damages them too. What to do then? Okay, this may sound confusing, but it's important to understand that this problem also hides a huge opportunity for people with kidney problems. You see, this comes from a paper that's redefining and reshaping the whole world of CKD. What they found out is that it's not really the stage of kidney disease you are in that defines your chances of improving your GFR numbers. There are other parameters that are more important. And one of these is keeping blood pressure under control without relying too much on antihypertensive medicines. Many patients that are doing this are actually improving, all right? By the way, this very significant meta-analysis is titled Renal Function can improve at any stage of chronic kidney disease and it was published on the journal PLOS ONE, one of the most authoritative medical journals. Now guys, if you have been following me already, you probably know that I'm not going to focus on the problem here. I want to focus on the solution. So question, what can you do to keep blood pressure under 130 over 80 without having to take several medications? Science says that there are several ways to control blood pressure naturally and protect the kidneys. Exercising regularly is one of the most effective ways to do that. According to studies, regular exercise is even more effective than taking prescription in treating hypertension. You can get up to a decrease of 8 over 4 millimeters of mercury in blood pressure with 30 minutes of moderate physical activity per day. Probably even more if your blood pressure is higher to begin with. And obviously this can be compounded by also following a healthy, low sodium plant-based diet with plenty of high potassium fruit and veggies. If you don't have a potassium restriction, 
I've seen personally people completely stopping the need for medications when doing just these two lifestyle changes actually. So yeah, run like your life depends on it. Just kidding, always start slowly. But for certain patients, this is not enough. So what I would recommend is to also look into certain supplements that have been found to help. One supplement you should consider if you are not already taking it is an omega-3 supplement. What a recent meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found out is that supplementing these essential nutrients can make a huge difference with hypertension. Up to 3.8 over 3.1 millimeters of mercury reduction as we can see. Another extremely effective and extremely safe supplement is magnesium. A very large number of patients are deficient in this essential mineral and this can cause hypertension. Now I know that many of you guys are already supplementing magnesium and I've received a bunch of questions about it in comment section. How to take it, what forms and more. This is why I've recently made a video about it. It's up here and also down in description if you missed it. Now guys, don't start all these things together or your blood pressure will get so low you won't be able to stand up from your chair. Always consult your doctor and introduce lifestyle and dietary changes gradually. Remember that winning the battle for your kidney health is a marathon, not a sprint. Up next, number 4 is beat what's causing it. Okay, when it comes to kidney health, there is no improving if we don't stop the cause of the damage. We've just seen how to deal with high blood pressure, but it's not a secret that close to 1 out of 2 CKD sufferers has diabetes. And we need to deal with that also. Now luckily, diabetes medications in general are not as controversial as blood pressure medications, but they still have side effects. For example, metformin is safe for the kidneys, but it can still accumulate in the blood of patients in the advanced stages. And then there are SGLT2 inhibitors that have kidney protecting properties at the point that they can be used even in CKD patients without diabetes. I'm talking about Forexiga, for example, but they can also come with an increased risk of urinary tract infection and we also have observed that getting in and out of these medications can produce a decrease in kidney function. So not as bad as blood pressure medications but it's clear that the closer we can get to a normal fasting sugar levels without medications, the better. Now some good news, it was believed for a long time that those who suffered from diabetes for six years or more couldn't go into remission. But now things have changed. Thanks to this new study, it's finally proven that even patients who had type 2 diabetes for 11 years can get diabetes into remission. So question, what can be done to beat diabetes naturally? When dealing with type 2 diabetes, the first resource should always be the diet. As this recent study shows, the diet alone can be enough to get diabetes into remission. But there is obviously more you can do to achieve this result. There are a few supplements that are proven to help. One that I always recommend is apple cider vinegar. Raw and filtered ACV is the best friend of people with diabetes. Several studies show that consuming real ACV can significantly increase insulin response and lower blood sugar levels with great benefit for the kidneys and not just for people with diabetes. But there is more. Berberine is also very recommended. It can have effects similar to that of metformin on glucose levels, but it's also a powerful way of lowering cholesterol and triglycerides levels, even better than metformin. Now guys, if you want to learn more about how to treat diabetes naturally, this video up here and also down in the description is for you. Up next, what can be even more important than dealing with diabetes and high blood pressure? Number three is treating the complications. Next step, maybe even more important, take care of the most common complications of CKD. There is a complication around seven out of 10 CKD patients have mostly without knowing about it. Mostly, 
without getting it under control. And it makes your GFR decline faster. It makes you risk your life. This complication is anemia. Guys, lately I've been trying to raise awareness about anemia and I will keep doing it. You know, recent statistics brought out a very concerning number. Up to 72.8% of those with kidney disease also have iron deficiency anemia. And that's a staggering amount of people. And the biggest problem is that, according to studies, only 4% of people with this problem are receiving the appropriate attention. Now, this is terrible because doctors don't care about it. And patients end up on dialysis for a complication that is treatable. Now, let me be very clear on this. If you have anemia and you don't take care of it, there is no way you are going to reverse the decline of GFR. This is why I'm uploading new video this week about this dangerously underestimated complication. Stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure you are not missing it. Another very serious complication we need to address to have success is metabolic acidosis. This is also very common and can lead to a faster decline in GFR. Like any complication, this is a vicious circle we are talking about. When GFR is reduced, people often have even more difficulty maintaining proper acid-base balance in the body, which can lead to a buildup of acid in the blood. And this is the definition of metabolic acidosis. This complication is so common and so damaging that in literature there is evidence of people reversing the decline of GFR just by taking care of metabolic acidosis. So question, how do you know if you have metabolic acidosis? If you have kidney disease, it's important to keep your CO2 levels under control to avoid a fast progression of the disease. There is a test called CO2 test that's used to do just that. But not all doctors give these tests regularly. Yeah, not all doctors read the studies about kidney disease I read for some reason. So keep in mind that when you do a metabolic panel, this is one of the things you should look at. The normal range is 23 to 29 mil equivalents per liter. Anything outside this range means you need to take action. How? Sodium bicarbonate is used to treat this issue, but you must also make sure your diet is in check. More about this later on in this video. And obviously, there are other complications that need to be dealt with. Most common are mineral and bone disorder, often caused by low calcium and high phosphorus levels. This often comes with thyroid problems too. And also gout is a common complication. This is a type of arthritis caused by a buildup of uric acid. Fortunately, most doctors know how to deal with this, but make sure you are being tested and treated. Up next, what can be even more important than dealing with complications? Number two is taking vitamin D. Okay, we all know that keeping our levels of vitamin D in check is crucial for kidney health. But what if I told you that this vitamin is even more important for the kidneys than you may think? You see, in the study I mentioned in the beginning, a great deal of effort was put into identifying which factors determine if a patient was going to improve their kidney health or not. What they found out is not just that vitamin D deficiency was less prevalent in improvers than non-improvers. They were also able to tell that the only complication of CKD that alone was linked to not being able to improve GFR levels was vitamin D deficiency. In all the stages of CKD, the lower the vitamin D levels are, the faster the decline of kidney function. Okay, so what does this mean to you? Well, first of all, that not enough doctors care about vitamin D levels. So you must do that by yourself, all right? ask to be checked regularly. 
this is very important and make sure you are doing all you need to do to keep vitamin D levels in the right range. Now this is an issue you must solve with the help of your doctor. The main reason why so many CKD patients have low levels of this vitamin is the inability of the kidneys to activate the vitamin D they may get from the sun, from foods or from supplements. What this means is that while for some patients taking high dose vitamin D supplements may help, especially if also taken with magnesium and vitamin K2, for some others the only solution is a prescription form of vitamin D. So ask your doctor to be checked for vitamin D levels and ask for a prescription in order to keep levels in the right range. Again, this is something you 100% need if your goal is to improve your kidney health. And there is just one step that's even more important. Number one is controlling protein and phosphorus intake. So, okay, the diet. The renal diet is probably the most important step of them all when it comes to stopping and reversing the decline of GFR numbers. As I was saying, there are many documented cases of patients reversing kidney disease only by following a simple renal diet. In particular, in a recent randomized controlled trial, 120 CKD patients were assigned a renal diet so easy they were able to learn all about it in just 15 minutes. Now the most incredible part, just by limiting protein and phosphorus intake, thanks to this very easy diet, all the patients in the intervention group were able to improve their GFR numbers. Incredible! I've made a full video about this, it's up here and also down in the description if you missed it. And this is all for today, thank you for watching, God bless you all!